What is that saying that you get more ants with honey? Hey y'all, it's me, your girl, Bless Trust, coming back to you with another video where on this channel, we like to go and take our peace and give God the pieces. So if this is your first time clicking on this channel and your first time seeing this face, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Martina, AKA Bless Trust. Welcome to the channel. And if you already are a part of the Bless family, welcome back. So if you haven't heard the great news, my husband and I, we are currently building a semi-custom home. Yes, to God be all of the glory. And we are documenting the entire process right here on this channel. So if that's the kind of thing that you like, you definitely wanna stick close to this channel. Please make sure to subscribe and also smash that notification bell so that you would be notified whenever I upload. So if you watched any of my videos on this new construction process, then you'll know that I have truly been enjoying it. And even in my last video where I talked about how the builders got it wrong, that slight hiccup still didn't deter me away from this process. One thing that I just have kind of grown to expect is that they're gonna make mistakes. Good builders are gonna make mistakes. All builders actually are going to make mistakes. But you know what? The best builders make it right. So today we're gonna talk about what, in my opinion, are some keys to having a successful build process. And you're gonna wanna stick around to the end because I'm pretty sure that the last two you may not have even considered, but we'll talk about that later. So I am assuming that you've already done your needs and your wants list. <laughs> if you're not sure what that is, just make sure that you watch the video. Okay, so number one, to know your product. So knowing the product means that I'm going to select what floor plan I want. And once I do that, I'm also going to select the community. That's gonna be important because you need to narrow down the community because that floor plan is gonna be a different price point in every community. So it just depends on area. Once I select the floor plan, I'm gonna see if they have any models available. I'm gonna go visit the model. When you go to the sales office, please make sure that you take your realtor with you. If by some chance your realtor is unable to attend that meeting, have your realtor actually call and set up the actual appointment. Therefore, they know that you do have representation and that if you do move forward, you will have a realtor by your side. I'm gonna go visit the model and I'm gonna learn all I can about what's standard and what's an upgrade. I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna get an upgrade price sheet because I wanna know how much realistically is this house going to cost me. Find out if that is an HOA community find out what those HOA fees are, and also see if she can give you a printout of HOA bylaws. But you wanna find out what the rules are for this HOA community because the rules may not be fitting to your lifestyle. What if one of the rules are there can be no home daycares and you have a home daycare? And then I'm gonna see if this community also has an architectural review board. And if so, what are their qualifications for the homes in their community because every home has to be up to a certain standard and so if you're like my husband and i we chose to get the free elevation because we wanted to see our money i wanted to put our money inside the house so we had a very basic elevation well our architectural review board said okay you're gonna have to add some more windows also you're gonna have to add some dormers number two you want to choose a reputable company okay I know that sounds very self-explanatory but sometimes we just get so excited when we're just chasing after a dream of ours and going after a new endeavor common sense kind of goes out the window you can't just let price point be the only thing that you consider because yeah they might be a good price point but what's their quality like and what's the quality of the product like? And what's the quality of the service like? The way that you can find out if you're choosing a reputable company, number one, Google. <laughs> Google has reviews. Check out Google reviews. Find out if they have a Facebook page. Go on that Facebook page and see what others have said about that company. Check out the Better Business Bureau. Also, 
check YouTube. You're on YouTube right now. You can just go ahead and search that builder. Search up those different builders and see what people's experience has been regarding that. And don't just look at the videos that are talking about their experience while they're building. Those videos are important too, but see if you can find videos of people that have had their home built and now it's like six months later and they can give you an update on the quality of their home. Another way is to just ask your realtor. Find out, okay, if your realtor recommends a particular builder if your realtor is an experienced realtor, their clients have all built with different builders. And so ask your realtor. Another thing is just to ask around, ask friends or families. Another way to make sure that they're a reputable builder is just to go out to the community. Go out to the community, talk to the neighbors, see if they enjoy the building process and see if they're enjoying their current home. Now, I do want you to be careful because there are communities where there are multiple builders in that particular community. So you want to make sure that you know your builders who built their homes. Number three, lock that rate. One way that we had to go and take our piece is by locking our rate. There are supply chain shortages, delays regarding countertops or cabinetry or appliances or windows or whatever it is you're not going to be stressed about it lock the rate i promise you it just gives you peace of mind number four expect delays me personally i'm going into this process expecting delays we locked our rate for six months our house is supposed to be ready in June. I locked it all the way up into September. <laughs> so when I talk about expect delays, I'm living this. Number five is to be kind, be respectful, and say thank you. <laughs> what is that saying that you get more ants with honey than with vinegar? I'm not sure, I'm horrible at sayings, but um, I butcher them all the time. I'm not saying that you can't assert yourself, that you can't bring issues to them. There's a way that you can do it and still maintain your dignity and be respectful. Just try, try to be kind, be respectful and say thank you. You know, when my husband and I, when we go out there, when we go to the property, just about probably 95% of the time that we go out there, we always have something for the men that are working on our home. We want them to have a good experience. We want them to see Christ and we want to be a good example to our children. If you can't afford to buy them donuts or drinks, just say thank you. Just say thank you, like you're doing a good job. Oh, that looks great. You can build relationships from that. You never know if you might meet any of these people, whether it's the builders or whether it's your superintendent. And you never know how your paths might cross again. The next one is that I need you to be detailed. What do I mean by that? Being detailed means that you should know the ins and outs of your contract. You should know everything that you're signing. Not just looking at the cost, like what you're gonna be held responsible for, but also know about the refunds. If something were to happen, let's say if I don't get my rate up, what does the refund look like? Do I get my earnest money back? You wanna have good communication. If you have questions, you wanna bring those questions up sooner versus later. But then also make sure, like the Bible says, you ask and you keep on asking. <laughs> now, sometimes these builders, they are busy. We are not the only home that they are building. And I understand that. So what I want you to do is to continue to ask until you get the clarity that you need, but also continue to ask until you're followed up with. It is important to communicate in writing. You know, texting and emailing, that is golden. Just because if something were to occur, especially in the earlier stages, and also with communicating in writing, communicate through pictures. Me verbally explaining myself to Charlie, we may not get on the same page, but if I can just, hey, show him a picture of what I want this to look like, that's golden. So if you're enjoying this video and you're getting value from this content, please make sure that you like the video, share the content, and subscribe. So my last tip for communication, and this is something that I just do in life, period, I like to basically sum up the conversation just so I can make sure that we're on the same page. And so for example, what I'll say is, okay, so I believe what I hear you saying is this. 
or I believe what you're saying is this. Okay, so what you're saying is, then I just repeat back what I have interpreted their answer to be. And that gives them the opportunity to say, no, 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 no. Or yeah, exactly, you're right. Number eight is to make sure that you are visiting the home site. You wanna go at least weekly. And when you go, make sure that you're taking pictures and that you're filming. And not just because you wanna create YouTube content, but just because I need to know where these pipes are, or I just wanna have on record, you know, what my home looks like. And so make sure that you're taking pictures, you're taking film and go visit often. And when you go to that design center, make sure that you also take pictures of your selections so that you can always have something to refer back to. So these last two are so crucial. In our experience, our realtor has just played such a crucial role in our new construction process. Number nine is to choose a realtor that specializes in new construction. If this is your first new construction process, then you definitely wanna have a realtor by your side and that's at no cost to you. But don't just have a realtor, but make sure that that realtor specializes in new construction or just has experience with new construction. And number 10, make sure you keep your realtor in the loop. So when you're communicating via email or text, you wanna make sure that you are constantly copying or forwarding those emails to your realtor or just making sure that they're in the email and included in that group text as well. Keep your realtor in the loop. On this channel, we like to go and take our peace and give God the pieces. Let me see